Welcome back. If you recognize that, it's because you've played Sonic before. That is a sound effect, a direct recording from our Sega. Not us. Not us, not a vocalized rendition. We held it with the microphone to a Sega console, not even to the TV speaker, to the console. Yep, and it makes that sound when you're about to drown as Sonic. And you get an air bubble at the last second because they never fucking give them to you when they should. So you panic and you have a little miniature anxiety attack until you hear... You do have an anxiety attack. Until you hear the magical sound that Zach's about to do. (laughs) Doka! That's the sound of relief. So, what's the topic? So the topic is favorite video game sound effects. This and uh, <clears throat> that is up there with mine, my ultimate favorite video game sound effects. So let's Sonic just, getting that bubble of air. Let's just fire some off. What are some that come to your mind? Um, Metal Gear Solid getting spotted by an enemy. Oh, yeah. I'll put That's that in too the hard edit. to vocalize. Yeah. No, <laughs> it, it'll come up in the background. Don't worry. Um, getting coins in, in Mario. Yep, that's a, one of the most recognizable sounds in video games, probably. And eating a mushroom in Mario. Yeah, yep. Very satisfying sound. Very satisfying. Oh, man, orgasmic. I got a couple. Um, the leveling up noise from Skyrim. Oh, the... Wah. Wah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, dude. I wasn't even thinking of new games. Yeah. Um, another one is the smithing sound from Skyrim. The metal hammer dun, 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 dun yeah. sound from when you're smithing things. Um what else? Skyrim has got great ones. Um uh the uh getting going to a Pokemon Center in Pokemon. Dun, 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 dun. I was gonna I was gonna say the winning sound also from Pokemon. Da, da, da. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Is that the winning sound or is that a level up sound? Is it? Shit, I don't know. It's a, like Or a, learning a new move. Let's Fuck, just call it a Pokemon a, sound. A Pokemon sound. All Pokemon sounds. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, the older games are really like sound effect heavy. Like for the the small sound effects, like well, I don't know. These are are these like tunes or sound effects? Like sound of like yeah, Zelda open like opening a chest in Zelda. Ba, 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 ba. That sound. I guess that's a sound effect. Yeah. What else? Breaking a lockpick in in Skyrim. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a very satisfying sound. <laughs> I wish I'm I'm gonna have a hard time trying to find no. These sounds. I'm I'm saying actually break it, not successfully pick a lock, but when you break it. Oh, no, that's not a good sound. No, but it's a it's a, it's a memorable one. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> that hurts my feelings. Ow. Why'd you bring that up? That. What what else? What else is a very good video game sound effect? Going down a tunnel in Mario. See, oh, I keep yeah. going back to Mario, but they had great sound well, effects. Well, cuz a lot of those, yeah, a lot of those older games relied on those like chip tune, just really quick sound effects, <laughs> sound bites, yeah. you know what I mean? That polyphonic. Ooh. Polyphonic, dude. <laughs> That's more than one phonic. That's more than one. What else? Shit. I can't think of any now. I had so many earlier when I was sitting here thinking about this. How about this? If you have any good sound effects, and I know you do, because you guys play a lot of games that I don't, send them over to us on Twitter over at Crossplay Pod, and we'll put a little poll together and see what everyone thinks. For now, though, what is something about your job that you wish people would understand let's talk about our jobs first so we can lay it out yeah that'll, uh, that'll help ease the nerves <laughs> <laughs> so i i work as an aircraft fueler so i fuel jets and small aircraft and then i tow them around it's like a, a fancy word for a gas station you know so i work with aircraft that's what i do so what do you do <laughs> i'm in the aeronautics industry i'm, um, I'm an aeronautical <laughs> I am a bartender. Okay. So and I work at uh, two different spots here in our hometown. So it's kind of like a hairdresser. You can, if you have the skill, you could work at a bunch of different places. That's yeah, very true. Just like working at an FBO, um, it's it's definitely a job that can carry you anywhere in this country. Um, you wouldn't really want to in other countries because most other countries don't tip their bartenders. Really? Yeah. WTF, mate? In Europe, they don't oh, fucking yeah. tip. Yeah. 
Yeah, so their bartenders, are, you know, work for Peanuts basically, which is like <clears throat> that's not fun. Well, then let's let's break into it. What is something about your job that you, most people don't get, or they don't quite understand, or they don't see it from your side? What's something people so, don't understand about your job? A lot of people see the bartender as okay. This is just party. It's a party job. He gets to come and easy drink money. and easy money, just make people drinks. But um, it actually takes a lot of it takes a lot of memorization, a lot of technique and skill to to make certain drinks. It's not just something anyone can do. But the biggest thing with bartending is it takes an incredible amount of patience. If you if you don't believe me, try going to a party when everyone else is drinking and stay sober. Because that's what it is when you're the bartender. Only you also are forced to be subservient to these motherfuckers. Yeah, these mouthy motherfuckers too. <laughs> yeah. I've been I've been at Zach's bar with him while he's had a couple rowdy gentlemen and ladies, just yeah. just some drunk people, and the amount of patience it takes. I, I just sat there watching him work, and I was like, I can't believe Zach would never let someone talk like this to him in the street. Like basically <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah, and I mean. There's still a line you draw there, but um, but you try to resolve everything because people are drunk. You try to resolve everything the smoothest way possible, and to do that, you have to really bite your tongue sometimes, um, like any customer service job, really. Yeah. But um, the difference is, is everything is kind of uh, pushed to the extreme because alcohol is involved, so emotions are fucking sky high for everyone. Yeah, um, yeah, and you're getting, especially at a bar where you get regulars, you're getting not the most mentally stable people, maybe because it's the it's the type of people that go to bars all the time and drink daily aren't always the most because some of the people we've seen there are clearly have had some city miles on them. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's not all uh, the guy getting a cocktail after work. You know what I mean? Yes. So you deal with some characters, is my point. Absolutely, and. Um, that's part of what makes the job great, though, at the same time. Um, so, so, sorry, sorry. What did I, did I miss when you actually stated, like, what the thing is that people don't understand about your job? Oh, what, yeah. What was the, can you say the amount of patience that, that it takes. Okay, okay, that's what I thought. And that it's not a job that you go to have fun and party and, you know, uh, meet people and things like that. It's not like that at all. It's, it's you go to the job and you try to create a good atmosphere at the bar for people to drink and have fun, but... You also got to, um, you know, you got to cater to everyone. And to do that, you really have to be patient. And so it's not just, it's not, not as glamorous as you'd think. Right. So for me, you know, I work at, and like you said earlier, an FBO, which is basically a gas station for aircraft. And a lot of people think the job might be, you know, so simple as sticking a hose in an aircraft and. As easy as filling up your gas tank. Yeah, like filling up a car when it's really not. Um, not only because of the uh, different variations in aircraft, they're all they're not like Chevys. They're not custom made for every idiot to use. Um, for example, certain aircraft use something called Prist, which is an anti-icing additive, which basically means that it stops their fuel lines from freezing when they're at really high altitudes because it gets really cold up there. So some aircraft require it, some don't. You got to know which ones do and which ones don't, and you got to be able to communicate to pilots. And, and because if you put, if you don't put Prist in an aircraft that requires Prist, it's going to have enough in its fuel lines to get up to altitude, but then it's going to freeze and that thing's going to drop like a rock. And there's been plenty of news stories that I've seen just because I'm in the industry of aircraft that have crashed because a fueler didn't put Prist. You know what I mean? Wow. So there's just some shit at stake. Yeah, yeah, there's stakes, there's lives at stake. So, I, But to answer the question plainly is that we're much more than just putting a hose in a plane because we're also, you know, we're CSR, we, we're customer service people, we're booking your food, we're booking your you know, catering, we're booking your hotel, we're booking your rental car, we're moving your $65 million aircraft, we're, you know, we're trusted with a lot. And the, some of these guys are guys that are getting paid, depending on the minimum wage in your state, getting paid anywhere from $8 to $20 an hour to move $65 million or more aircraft. You know, some of them are cheap, you know, air quotes, as far as aircraft go, you know, $80,000 aircraft. But 
a lot of what we move are multi-million dollar aircraft. So there's a lot of trust being put into that guy that a lot of these pilots look down on as like a fueler, just a you know yeah. regular fueler. So just the job is much more multifaceted than it would seem at face value, just like any other job, right? Yeah. Um, so I guess that's kind of a generic point to make, but I, I, I've been in the business for like five years about, and I've seen the way a lot of people look at the people in my position, kind of like you would look at just, I don't know, anyone that is a really menial job. Yeah. And it's not that menial. We're being trusted with uh, a lot of money in our hands. Yeah, huge responsibility. So moving on down the list of the very last topic of the day. It's been a long one, but a great one. And we're glad to close it out with this sweet ass topic of frustration. Zach. No. So maybe next time I'll hit you in the nuts and then <laughs> hand you hand you a control. <laughs>